Okay, I've been notified that I've been muted for most of the game. If you haven't heard me, I've been doing just a phenomenal job so, thus far. Probably the best commentator you've ever heard, or you unfortunately didn't hear because I was muted, so I apologize about that. So for everyone to know, we're sitting at 0-0 uh, with seven minutes left in the four, first quarter. It's uh, Nick Wazizensky here, voice of the Vancouver Island Raiders in beautiful NDSS field. And what looks to be... Looks like the sun's going to stay out right now for the game, so it's absolutely beautiful. Raiders have done some great things to start the game. Last play got a little bit jumbled, and referee's discussing things right now. Yeah, it looks like offsetting penalties on this thing. Could be a redo of down. To be the Raiders second in about 13 again. Interesting, Sunday. So there was a offside on the offense and also a legal contact on the receiver. So they weren't exactly offsetting penalties. The difference in yardage was five yards, so they moved it back up. So it'll be second and eight. It was, you know, really good first drive for the Raiders, though. It's chewing up the clock. They've had the ball all game so far. We have not seen the Cantaloupe's Broncos offense yet, so. Look for Chomlock to try to pick up eight yards here. From shotgun, trips right. He's looking left, he's looking left, he's looking right. He's jumping in, jumping out, gets outside of the contain. Drops it just absolutely beautifully for a great Raiders first down. Phenomenal job by number, number one, Dylan Pye. The great job to get that, get that catch. Great job of Chomlock to Again, show some athleticism, get inside, outside, doing all sorts of things to, you know, get that first down. Raiders extend the drive again. Just a phenomenal, phenomenal job here. Let's see, I'm going to guess that they're going to try to get the ball to Alocious here, who's been just thunderous with the ball so far. And I was right. They hand the ball off. He droops to the left, up for about a four to five yard gain, looks like. Great call. Great call by me, obviously. <laughs> Called that one. Uh, it seems about three yard gain. It looked like they picked up a little bit more, maybe a bit of a tough spot, but yeah. Six seventeen left in the first quarter. Zero zero. Raiders and Camloops. But it's second and about seven. From the Kamloops 17. Shamalak behind center. Shotgun formation. He's looking left. He's, he's rolling out to his left hand side. He sees a receiver. And it looks. Oh, oh my God. He caught the ball, but it was just out of bounds. That was Dylan Pye again. But there is a flag on the play. Usually when the flag's there, it's probably holding. Stated in previous broadcasts, offensive line holds every play. Oh, offside on the defense and holding on the offense. So it looks like it's going to be a re redo of down here. We'll see what the refs decide to do here. They said the Raiders have done a great job of chewing up some clock in this first quarter right now. A long established drive. Ten minutes down in this first quarter already, and we've only seen the Raiders with the ball. <laughs> Net difference of five yards, so the Raiders will get. Will, the Raiders will get pushed back another five yards. It's been hilarious. Jumping up and down. Refs showing their flags lots here at the beginning of the game. Chumluck from shotgun. You see his trips right. He's looking right. Passes deep. Fights. Oh! Dylan. Chumluck had Dylan Pye wide open on the right-hand side. Just out of his reach. Raiders will bring on their field goal team here. Now, Chomalak, Chomalak has, uh, you know, it looks like Pi has been open all day long, and he's been trying to hit him just 
couldn't connect on that one. But you know, look for that. Look at look for that matchup all day long. I mean, it looks like Chamlux found his favorite receiver to start this game. This looks like it'll be roughly a thirty, you know, twenty nine thirty yard field goal here. And it's up. And it's good. Raiders get the first points in the game. They probably wanted a touchdown there. They very, very close, but they'll take three. And they'll also take the fact that they got almost 10 minutes off the clock in the first quarter, keeping that defense well rested. So this is uh, some of the struggles that they had in their previous game here at home against Okanagan was giving their defense some rest. They Offense get a nice, long, sustained drive. Chew up most of the first quarter. So we'll get our first look here of the Kamloops Broncos offense coming up here. Again, the score, Vancouver Island Raiders 3, Broncos 0. 521 left in the first quarter. It's been it was a very long, good drive of the Raiders. Lots of penalties so far, but... It's been relatively even on both sides. Not sure of the stats quite yet, but it's... The wind's starting to blow here at NDSS Field. My papers just went everywhere. But, as you can see, I held myself nice, calm, and composed. Like the professional I am. Raiders kicking off. And it's deep! It's like it's... Returned by number 88 on the Cowboys Frogers. Get out to the right-hand side, but great job. Looks to be number two by the VI Raiders. Number two, Sean Adams with a big, big stop on special teams. Return on the play there by number, it looked like 81, Barrett Walsh. All right, so the Camus Broncos will take over at their own 30-yard line. Let's take a look at this offense, see what they have. Reed Vankernot, quarterback for the Camus Broncos, takes over, shotgun formation. Twin set, hands off to number 24. It looks like number 24, Cameron Grez Grigorovich, the Camus Broncos. Liking big, long last names to make it more difficult on the play-by-play -play guy. I appreciate that, guys. But uh, nice little pickup of about three, three to four yards by Grigorovich, who I'm probably butchering that name, so I apologize. Uh, Vanconet, also probably butchering that name, takes over from center again. Second and six. Shotgun formation, trips right. Looks left. Finds number 17, but it's going to be well short of the first down by about three yards. Uh, Colton Milkey for the Kamloops Broncos on the catch, but there is a flag down. If this is on the Kamloops Broncos, then it should be a punting situation. But it looks like it's going to be on the VI Raiders. If you believe the... Yes, it does. It looks like it's... Offside on the Raiders, tough penalty on second and uh, second and long to take. You just can't do that. Yeah. Awesome. Defense. 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 It is still second down after just a five-yard penalty, but it'll be second and short. If I would have to guess, I think they're going to probably look back to a, a very similar play as the one they just ran. A quick pop pass to the right or left side. Shotgun formation. Trips right. He takes the snap. Oh, he hands the ball off. But it's stopped immediately by the VR Raiders. It doesn't look like he came close to the first down marker. Number 24, Grigorovich. Just well short. Oh, yeah, yeah, well short. It's going to be a third and, third and two. Two and a half. I don't know. It looks like it looks like the Cavaliers Broncos are electing to go for it here. Wow! Big gutsy call. They're in shotgun formation. 
Raiders got a blitz here, and they are coming. Good little, good little pickup for a first down. Vankinet with a nice little QB sneak. Picks up a couple yards. Got to be honest, seemed a little bit too easy. Seemed too easy. You got to squeeze that down. You got to take away that. Make them do something special with it. And they just didn't. Shotgun formation. Vanconet. First, first down from the 44-yard line. He looks. He hands the ball off to number 85. Off to the right side. He gets a gain of almost 10 yards. Great run there. Great one there by number 85. I unfortunately don't have his uh, his name here. But showing some great speed coming from the receiver position to take that handoff. Gain of about eight yards. Second and two. Back in that shotgun. Trips left. It looks like a pass. He's looking left. Quick puck pass. Over to number 87. First down. For about a nine-yard gain. They'll get it up to the 50. To the roughly the Raiders 54-yard line, 53-yard line. So they march, mass, they march past midfield into the Raiders' territory. A minute and 57 seconds left in the first quarter. The Raiders up 3-0 over the Kamloops Broncos. Vekinot at shotgun. Trips right. Receivers in motion. Takes a snap. Fakes a handoff. Gets it right back to Grigorovich for about a four-yard gain. Nice little misdirection. Little shades of like a shotgun formation wing T. Just classic. Be second and six on the play. All right. Camus Broncos just doing exactly what the Raiders did, getting a nice longer sustained drive. Bacon on a shotgun. He's looking left. Finds his receiver, a great out pattern. Gain of about 15 yards by number 85. Again, I don't unfortunately have his name here. It looks like they have an incomplete list, but it might be Barrett Walsh. Yeah, it looks like it's Barrett Walsh with the catch. But what a... Oh. Wow, the vacant knot with just a fantastic catch over there to Barrett Walsh. But you know, there was a defense. There was a defensive penalty by the Raiders on that. It was offside, but Kamloops obviously declined it. First and ten from the Raiders 40-yard line. Vacant knot takes the takes the snap, hands it off to number 11, going on the left side, stopped immediately by number 27 on the Raiders. That was Will Adams, who had a great game here a couple weeks ago. It was looked like a, that, that was run by uh, Evan Guizzo. A little bit of easier name, so thank you. Oh, referee timeout right now. Broncos call for a timeout. So, so yeah, referee timeout right now as you, for all the people watching at home. Uh, you know, we uh, this is our second game with the new Raiders TV, and I'm sure you noticed that it's just uh, me at the helm here. Uh, you know, there's a lot of you know great, great feedback unanimously. Uh, the feedback from the Okanagan Sun fans and the VI Raider fans is that I did a fantastic job in our first game, but our color guy Will Whitman Tamuzak was just awful, so we got rid of him. We uh, we said sayonara. Gave him his walking papers and uh, just felt that this is a better situation. And I think uh, in the first quarter, you've probably recognized and agree with me on that one right there. So thank, let me join all of us in thanking Whitman for his contributions last week. So it's up to you, everybody in the store. The Vancouver Island Raiders are up 3-0 on the Camelos Broncos with about 40 seconds left here in the first quarter. A very quick first quarter uh, where there's, uh, both teams have only had one possession. So... Both good sustained drives by both teams. 
So referee timeout here. I'm not sure exactly what's going on. A little TV timeout, I guess. Give me a chance to talk a little bit more. But I'll tell you one thing. Uh, Vankinot's looking really good in some of his throws so far. We've only seen uh, we've only seen a limited sample so far, but he's uh, you know he's found he found his target's pretty good. I believe he's started the game about four for four so far. Raiders run defenses look strong. And then the Raiders offense looked extremely good marching down the field. Shalicone was just, just, just missed Dylan Pye in the wide open in the end zone there. But uh, he's connected with Pye about three or four times already in the game. And timeout over. Camus Broncos take over. Second and ten from the Raiders 40 yard line. Bacon not takes a, takes a snap, looks right, rolls out, gets to the outside. He's looking, he takes off, he's running, he's running, he's running. Oh, that looks to me like a, uh, it could be close to a first down, taken off on that right-hand side. Now, this is, again, a problem that the Raiders, uh, plagued the Raiders a couple weeks ago against the Okanagan Sun, is keep and contain. They got to they gotta find a way to keep that quarterback in the pocket. They're making, they're making, uh, or an interception. yeah, they're making, yeah, looks like they gave them the first down. Now I will say, in their own red zone, the VR Raiders have been phenomenal this season, particularly at home. They did a great job against Okanagan, drawing a lot of turnovers. Let's see if we can pull one out here. Shotgun formation, he hands the ball off. To Gregovich. Again, the Raiders do a pretty decent job of stopping them, but it looks like it's still going to be about a four to five yard gain. And that'll be it for the first quarter. The Vancouver Island Raiders, three. Cam Loops Broncos, zero. Good start for the VI Raiders. Good start for the Cam Loops Broncos, too, to be honest with you. Both teams are long, sustained drives. That was about as quick a quarter as you'll ever see. Uh, 20-minute quarter. We'll be done by 7 today. <laughs> uh, it is a, the weather seems to be holding up here in uh, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful Nanaimo, British Columbia. The premier spot of junior football in Vancouver Island. If you notice, for those of you who tuned in to me in our first game, you might notice that the energy level isn't quite there. That's because I was at a wedding last night and I did partake in some of the festivities. So absolutely, just trying to maintain a clear and positive vibe with all my viewers and fans out there. But this is the energy level you're going to get today. So end of quarter time, Kamloops take over. Second and five from about the Raiders 25 yard line. Bacon not shotgun formation, trips left. He fake hands off, rolls out right, gets outside Katane again, finds the wide open receiver for a first down. It'll be about first and five again. The Raiders need to keep Katane. They got to keep that court. That's that's where they're getting beat consistently. It's a nice catch there by Connor Melky. That's his second of the game. Second or third now, actually. He seems to be a popular target of Vacant Knot. First and about, no, it looks to be first first and ten from the ten-yard line. Vacant Knot, shotgun formation. Trips left. And they go back to that motion play. Running back gets to the outside, and he walks in for the touchdown. Unbelievable. Unfortunately, my... Player list only goes up to 81 here, so I can't tell you the player's name, but uh, number 88 there had a great run. And Katane on both run and pass has been the issue for the Raiders. They got to find a way to keep that edge. A quick score update after that touchdown, the Broncos 6, Raiders 3. They're going out to kick a PAT. Great drive, great answering drive by the Kamloops Broncos. This is... Uh, 
48 with the catch, and it's kick, and it's good. Extra point is good. So that makes the the score, yeah, 13.55 left in the second quarter. The Broncos 7, the Raiders 3. This is a very, very, very big game for the Kamloops Broncos. I don't think they've ever had a victory against the Vancouver Island Raiders in their history. And uh, this is about as the, this is going to be tight because you got uh, a knock them out, drag them out, uh, BCFC right now. Chilliwack, I believe they're two and two and one, and you got o Okanagan Sun who are three and zero. Oh. Cam, uh, the Western Rebels that are three and zero, oh. and these in this Kamloops Broncos team that's uh, one and two, with the Raiders being one and two. So this game here could decide, you know, who gets to that fourth and final playoff spot. Raiders return. Up to the right side. Good little return. Yeah, by number four. Yeah, Marin Bradbuck, who's been quiet today, but a nice little run. Nice little return. Look, it, was it looked like it was stopped on the play by Scott Polzer. Rain to his arms. Raiders take over at their, their own 35-yard line. Great first drive. A lot of mixed plays, some trickery, some you know, play action, a little bit of you know, fake punt in there. It was an exciting first drive. Let's see if they can build on it. Chamalak hands the ball off. This time stopped deep in the backfield by number 44, the Kamloops Bronco Broncos, Maxim Bosk. Great, great stop. Deep, deep for a loss of about seven yards. Slow developing play out of the VI Raiders there. And the Kamloops Broncos came up and made just a statement stop on their defense. Raiders need to do something big here. I assume look for Marin. Right now we haven't seen, I don't think he's been passed to yet today. All right, Chamalak, this is a big play. Trips on the right-hand side. He rolls out right. He gets the edge. And he looks, finds the receiver. That is complete to, complete to number 12, Aaron Gordon. But it doesn't look like it's going to be anywhere close to a first down. you got to believe the Raiders are going to punt here. Yeah, the Raiders will be punting here on their own 40 yard line, smart move. Nice little pitch and catch, just that, you know, when you get when you get knocked down about 15 yards, you know, second 15, second 17 situation, it's very hard to recover from that. But it's nice to see Aaron Gordon get involved, see if they can get Marin a little bit involved. Dylan Pies had a great start to the game. One thing that often gets uh, overlooked is the play of the offensive line. Both offensive lines have looked fan phenomenal so far in this game. A lot of protection. Uh, aside from one or two plays, we haven't seen much pressure on either quarterback uh, in passing situations. So, Yeah, it looks like it was a timeout. I don't know if it's a referee timeout or on the Broncos there. Yeah, it's third and about five. I don't suspect the Raiders are going to do any more trickery on this play, but you never know. It worked the last time. Something tells me Kamloops is going to be a little bit more prepared for it this time. All right, Raiders punting from their own 30-yard line. Deep punt. Nice, nice punt. Gets back to number 88. Looks like it's going to be probably a no yards penalty as well there too. Keon Kidd had just go scored the touchdown there for Kamloops with a nice little five-yard return. Plus it will be another 15 or so added on to that with the new yards call. You just got to be a little more aware of that when you're a uh, VI Raider there. That 15 yards is big. It's got to be discipline in those situations. 
Uh, Kamloops Broncos will probably take over. At Correction, is this a five-yard penalty, not a 15-yard penalty for no yards now. So, yeah, uh, the Camels Broncos will get good field position as they take over at the 55-yard line, right at center field. All right, let's see here. Van Knott. Shotgun formation. Quads right. 88 goes off to the left-hand side. Trips right. Hands the, oh, no. Great play action pass. Hits 88 again. Nice. It looks like really a no yards play there. They tried to get the ball into an athlete's hands, but it, Raiders do a good job of scraping and filling. They might give them one yard here on that game. So second and long. Whoa. That seemed to me like a very good spot. Looked like he took four steps up there. I saw that referee. Didn't like it. Shotgun formation. They're going. Trips out. Oh, look, looks like quads right. Receivers in motion. Shotgun. He's looking left. Finds 88. Find, oh, this time it was. That looked like it was a running back out of the Grigorovich. Out of the backfield for a great little nine yard gain, eight yard gain. It looks like it's going to be more than enough for the first down. Oh. That time it wasn't as good of the spot, but it's still enough for the first time. Camel's getting tricky. A lot of motion in their backfield, a lot of misdirection. Keeping the Raiders on their heels. Camel's take over at the 40, Raiders 45-yard line. Shotgun formation, trips right. Shalikum hands the ball off. Raiders get good pressure. They get up. Great job, number 23 of the Vancouver Island Raiders, Blake Johnson with the big step up, gets, they, the last man gets up there, keeps contained for a loss of two, two, three yards on the play there. That's what the Raiders have to do. Second and long, big play here. Raiders need a stop. After that long sustained drive by Kamloops, they have to get the ball back here. Shotgun formation. Trips left. He, making not looks left. Looks right. It looks like there's going to be some sort of holding penalty here. He looks deep. Passes it. No one even close. So it's just a throwaway ball. Looks like it in that in that in that vicinity. It's usually a holding call. I have a feeling the Raiders though will decline it and just. Make the make the Camelot's Broncos punt it away. Regardless, Raiders got what they wanted there. Yeah, looks like it was it was holding. I was right, nailed it. Yeah, Raiders obviously declined the penalty. Third and twelve. And it looks like yeah, the Camelot's will bring out the punting team here. Will Adams in the back there for the return man. Uh, yeah, punt, the punt team's on the field. Big stop of the Raiders. Let's hope to get a big return here. They need to flip this field position around. Oh, nice punt. Will Adams get, catches it. I don't know how there wasn't no yards there. But he gets to the right side. He's off to the right. He's juking, he's driving. I don't see how they don't call it no yards there. It looked like the kid was about well within two, three yards. Regardless, the refs decide to keep the po their flags in the pocket for the first time today. And Raiders will take out, take over on about their 15-yard line, it looks like. Yeah, it's a little less sunny here. It's easier to see some things. So Raiders take over the 15. Let's see what they do. See if they try to get Marin Bradbrook and Aaron Gordon involved a little bit more. Also look for Dylan Pye, who seems to be wide open all game so far. They hand the ball off. Fumble. Oh, no. Fumble. Recovered by the Kamloops Broncos. You just can't do that in your own end. 
Disastrous play by the Vancouver Island Raiders. Big fumble, big fumble recovery. It was a little far, I couldn't see who exactly recovered that fumble. Looked like it could have possibly been number eight, Logan Ritchie. It looked like with a big fumble recovery. You can't do that if you're the VI Raiders, not, in your, not with a game that means this much. Mistakes happen, but. So with about 8.38 left in the second quarter, the Broncos are up 7-3. They take over on the Raiders' 15-yard line. The Raiders have been good in this spot in the past. However, the Camels Broncos did just score a touchdown here. Hands the ball off to Grigorovich, right up the middle. Nice stop there by the Vancouver Island Raiders. It looked like there was stopped by there by number six, Jacob Gilman, linebacker. But a nice gain up the, uh, up the middle of about eight and a half, nine yards. By Grigorovich. Okay. Shotgun. Run, run up again by Grigorovich for what looks to be enough for a Kamloops Broncos first down. Yep, it's a first down. It'll be first and goal from the Raiders. Looks to be about three, four yard line. Raiders are in tough situation here. Let's see if they can hold them to three. I think you got to bring the heat here. Keep contained, keep contained. That's the name of the game. They're going to try some misdirection thing. All right, Vankin not from shotgun. Let's see what happens here. Hands the ball off to Grigorovich. This time he gets up and it's a touchdown. Right down the left side. Big run for a touchdown. Raiders shoot themselves in the foot by a fumble within their own 15-yard line. Camels Broncos. Do what they needed to do. Get a, gets a quick six points. Brings the score to Kamloops 13, Raiders 3. Kamloops to try to kick off for the extra point here. Tough, tough, tough start to the game for the VI Raiders here. Again, this game could be completely different. Dylan Pye was wide open in the end zone, just out of the fingertips, and made the Raiders settle for a field goal on their opening drive, which was a great drive by the Raiders. And then two quick touchdowns by the Camels Broncos, and we're in a 14-3 game. Some sort of timeout here, or referee timeout. Oh, it looks like a Raiders player might be down. He's on his knees. No. Hard to see what's going down on that. Maybe the referees just need a water break. Right. Still not sure what's going on. Yeah, Camels Broncos also doing a good job of mixing things up. They've thrown a lot of different misdirection plays out there, a lot of crisscrossing action. They've found different receivers across the board. And, uh, and, and this drive, they started to establish the run a little bit more in the last couple drives with uh, Grigorovich, uh, you know, consistently get, uh, picking up decent runs. Oh, there seems to be a player being, I don't know if he got ejected or if it's a, I don't know what happened there, but they're escorting him off the field. There's two of them. Seems a little bit dramatic to me. Oh. So it looks like there was a uh, objectionable conduct and then a disqualification of the players. So I don't know what happened there. I didn't see anything too explosive. The refs took all day and all night trying to figure that one out. 
PAT. Camels. It's up and it's good. That brings the score. Kamloops Broncos 14, VI Raiders 3. Seven minutes left in the second quarter. Seven minutes and three seconds left. VI Raiders fan, you got to be a little worried right now. They're only, Camels was only able to muster seven points against the VI Raiders in their first meeting two, uh, two weeks ago in Kamloops. Uh, the Raiders' defense hasn't played bad. Uh, they've been put in a bit of a tough situation with the, uh, with the, with the fumble there on the uh, Raiders' own 15-yard line, and it came back and haunted them big. You just turnovers, turnovers, turnovers. You can't have them. They decide a lot of games. They decide too many games. Good thing is, is overall, the, other than that fumble, the Raiders' offense has looked good. So we'll see what they can do here. They need a big return. Flip this field possession. Camelos has had better field position than the Raiders. Starting from the 55-yard line and the 15-yard line a couple times. So let's see if the Raiders can flip it. Oh, quick squig kip. Over to the right-hand side. Gives the Raiders great field position. Interesting call there. I don't really understand what Camelos was doing in that situation. They're up 14-3. It would have been smarter just to kick the ball deep there, but they decide to do something fancy. And kick it right to the Vancouver Island player who didn't get much of a return, but it allows them to take over at the four, their own 42, 41-yard line. Let's see. Let's see. It was a little bit better field position, which all come could do right now. Alocious Kuhn has looked good so far. It looks like it's going to be a pass here. Trips right. He's looking right. Rolls out to the right side. Gets outside of Katane. Takes off with it. Runs for what looks to be about seven yards. Oh, they have him marked out a little bit earlier than that. About a five-yard five gain. Five-yard gain, but still, that's a great first down play. Jolicum using his athleticism again. He's a shifty. He's, he's faster than he seems. Got to start tossing the ball up a little bit here, getting some big chunk yards, I think. Second and five from the Raiders' 45-yard line. Jolicum, shotgun formation. He's looking left, finds 83, catches the ball, gets the first down. Up to almost a 50-yard line, 55-yard line. Number 83 there, Hayden Day with another catch. Great job there by uh, by Chalicum finding the open receiver quick, getting that first down. About a gain of about 12 yards there. Receiver doing a great job of getting the ball upfield as well too. First and 10 from the Raiders 50. 50 three-yard line. Jollicum shotgun formation. He's looking right. He's throwing deep right. He has pie. Oh! And it looks like it's P.I. Big, big, big pass interference call. If that's what it is. Flags thrown down. Oh, it doesn't look like it's pass interference because... The refs are coming back. Forward pass interference. Defense. Oh. Number 20. Sorry. It's a 15 yard penalty. Automatic. First down. Oh, they. I guess they don't have the spot of the ball penalty. I must have missed out on those rules. I don't know why it wouldn't be at the spot of the infraction anymore. But a 15 yard penalty by the Kamloops Broncos. Brings the ball over to the Kamloops Broncos 42 yard line. First down, Vancouver Island Raiders. Again, that, that ball was thrown up for Dylan Pye again, who seems to be the favorite target of Chalicum so far this game. And the deep handoff gives the ball to Alocious. Kuhn, who gives a nice spin off the, initial, of, off the initial hit for about four or five extra yards there. He's been putting his shoulder down, and he's been getting, picking up extra chunks of yards after that first hit. Great job there by Kuhn. Four, 
Raiders looking to do some of the same sort of shifty offensive work that Kalmus has been doing. Misdirection. From the 37-yard line, Raiders second and eight. Throws the ball over. That quick pot pass. Great job by the receiver to get up to looks like the first looks like the first down. Hayden Day again with the reception there. No, it was only about five yards, so it'll be about th third and three. Third and three. What will the Raiders do? It looks like they're leaving the offense on the field. I like the Raiders. You know, 14-3. 14-3 game. Four minutes and 27 seconds left in the second quarter. Broncos 14, Raiders 3. Third and three. Big play by the Raiders. Oh, it looks like the VI Raiders have taken a timeout. In that situation, I would have got them to line up and try and draw them offside before taking that timeout. But perhaps there's some miscommunication or something. So Raiders timeout. This has been a very interesting game. The Raiders have showed the ability to move the ball downfield. Unfortunately, had a poorly timed turnover on their own 15-yard line, giving the Broncos an easy seven points. And then, uh, yeah, and then the Broncos have also shown great ability to move the uh, move the ball as well, resulting so far in a Broncos 14, Raiders three game. Both teams are strong, but it's Shalikum's getting a chance to show his stuff right now and. Third and third and three. It's uh, this is a big play. They wanted to talk it over. We'll see. We'll see what happens. We'll see what happens here. Shall it come? Shotgun formation. He looks left. Sees his receiver. Oh! Almost picked off on the play. By number 20, Nolan Marsden back, but he tips the ball down. It's just as good because it's a turnover on downs for the Kamloops Broncos. All right. All right, they look for that pop pass one too many times, it looked like, because Kamloops seemed like they were ready for it. Jordy Marsden, um, Marsden back stepped up and made a great play. But it could have been worse for the VI Raiders. It could have been a pick six there. So Kamloops Broncos take over at the uh, at their own 35-yard line. Vankinet snaps the ball, hands the ball off. Number 88 again, Jukes Jobs, and he's off to the races. He's off to the races. Unbelievable. Will they catch him? Will they catch him? Oh, they catch him right down at about the five-yard line. Kamloops Broncos, number 88. We don't have his name here, so I can't tell you his name, but he's been on fire all game. Hold on. There seems to be some confusion. Oh, wow. Big, big, big offside penalty by the Kamloops Broncos. Negates almost a 65, 70-yard run. And the Raiders just got the break they needed. Wow. What, what, what a poorly timed... That is tough. Offside on the offense. Wow. The Raiders got a little lucky there. Unbelievable. Yeah, that negates what would have been a almost 75-yard run there and pins it back five. That's a net 80-yard loss by the camp. That's an 80-yard loss on that penalty. Tough, tough pill to swallow in a very close game still. Raiders get the break. All right. Bank and not. Shotgun formation. Raiders need a big play here. First and 15. Broncos hand the ball off. De Gregorovich spins out of it. And he's off. Oh, my God. Unbelievable. About a 30-yard gain. Awful tackling by the VI Raiders. They got to they gotta break down. They got to start making some plays here. This is getting ridiculous. Taylor 
Grigorovich with a great run, spinning out of about three arm tackles by the VI Raiders. The Raiders need one of their big names to step up and make a big play here. Got to get off the ball. You got to break down. You got to make tackles. Hand off to the right. To Grigorovich again. This time, big stop on the play. Looked like the right end there. Looked like, no, oh, looked like number uh, looked like number 47, Tyler Vinny with a nice with a nice tackle on the play. Still about a gain of about four yards on the trap play by the Broncos. The Broncos, you can feel, the, yeah, you can feel the tide shifting here as the Broncos are establishing the run game, running it down the Raiders' throats. Shotgun formation pass. He's looking deep, and he takes off. They cannot gets off. Jukes jives, gets enough for the first down. There is a flag on the play. It looks like it's other in the in the area of holding. Holding, I was right. So the Raiders catch another break. So it should be about a 10-yard penalty, which will give the Raiders second in about, or give the Camus second about 15. Again, the score is 14 for the Camus Broncos, three for the Raiders. Two minutes and 20 seconds left in the first half. Big, big, big penalty. Big, another big penalty. So, uh, Kamloops Broncos have essentially, through penalties, taken away an 80 yard run and uh, in a bit, what would have been a big first down with less, with less than three minutes left to play. Now they're sitting about second and 17, 18 yard line. The Raiders have to get a stop here. Shotgun formation. Ha oh. Great play action pass. Gets outside. Finds, oh, in and out of the hands of number 12, Aiden Cummins. Great pass by Vankadot. I thought he had it. Some decent coverage there. It was a tough spot for the Broncos receiver to make the play, but great, great job. The Raiders got the stop they needed, and Kamloops will be forced to punt. So this could be a big, big, big tide switcher if the Raiders are able to do something this drive. Again, there's two minutes and 14 seconds left in the half. Broncos 14, Raiders 3. Essentially, pretty close to a touchdown was negated off of a, a holding call for the Broncos. Broncos getting confused here. It's third and 17. I don't think there should be any trickery on a play like this. They're going to punt the ball. Oh, they're taking. They're taking. They take. Uh, Broncos take the time delay penalty. Big. So that's right in this drive. About 110 yards worth of negated yards for the Camloops Broncos. So it's a 10-yard penalty because it was in the last three minutes. Usually it's a five-yard penalty. So Kamloops Broncos punting from their own 35-yard line. It's like a deep, deep punt. Caught Will Adams. I don't know how that wasn't no yards. How that wasn't no yards, I have no idea. I felt... <laughs> So they get, one of the coaches is right by the uh, play calling booth here, so we're getting his reaction to that no yards call. So the Raiders take over at their own 45-yard line. Two minutes, five seconds left in the half. Broncos 14, Raiders 3. So far in the game today, whenever they've looked in the direction of Dylan Pye, it's worked out for them. But... Marin Bradbrook has been conspicuously quiet today. Let's see if they look his way. Chalcombe looks right, and he is. He's looking deep. 
Underthrown pass, intercepted by the Kamloops Broncos. Well underway. He was looking in the in the vicinity of Dylan or of uh, Marin Bradbuck, but well underthrown. Forfeit. That's not what you want to do in that sort of situation. Broncos take over immediately. They get the ball back, right back at their 35-yard line. Didn't look like uh, didn't look like he got a lot out of that ball. A little bit floater. Maybe caught the wind. There's heavy wind here at NDSS Field. Bacon not takes over. Shotgun. Quads to right. 88 moved off to the left side. They're looking for him again. This play they've used about five times, and it's worked almost every single time. Quick gain up the field for about six, seven yards. He's been wide open in the flats. They've used that same play about six or seven times today. They've got to gotta make some adjustments at halftime. Actually, that was almost nine yards, so it was very, very short for second and very short. I would look for the Broncos to maybe take a shot here with a minute 38 left. Oh, no, they hand it off. And it looks like they get the easy first down. Easy first down. That's Grigorovich with a nice little run right up the middle. After a little bit of a slower start for him, he's been on fire in the second quarter here. Bacon not takes over. It's like again, quads right formation. 17 shifts over to the left side this time. He looks right. Initially, then looks left. He finds 17 wide open in the middle. And he breaks three. He breaks through three or four Raiders tackles for about a 50-yard reception right down the Raiders are in defense. they got to make that tackle as well. The Camus Broncos have been looking at that shifting receiver from one side to the other. Big play by the Broncos. First and, first and 10 from the Raiders 15 yard line. Bacon not. Trips left. He, oh, he gets outside of Katain again. Right to 17 who finishes off for the, what looks to be a first down from the Raiders two yard line. Contain the issue again. Bankinet doing a phenomenal job this drive. I think he's about three for three for about 60 yards. See if they can cap it off. This would be a huge, huge, huge play with only 45 seconds left in the half in a 14-3 game. Raiders need a stop here. Quarterback sneak easily walks in. That's it. You can't let that happen. Too easy. Touchdown, Kamloops Broncos. So with 43 seconds left in the first half, the Broncos have 20. Raiders, 3. That's now 14 points off turnovers for the Kamloops Broncos. And that's been the major difference of the game. Number 48, Cadence Keepness for the extra point. He gets it through, and he's three for three on extra points today. This is a unfamiliar sight for Vancouver Island Raiders fans. This is the first time, you know, this is, Camus are looking for their first victory over Vancouver Island in history. And they have come out firing in the first half. There's still 43 seconds left in the half. Let's see if the Raiders can muster up something to finish off this half. Four, 
former former VI Raiders head coach and defensive coordinator Doug Hawking used to say the biggest momentum shifts happen at the end of the half and the beginning of the second half. So if the Raiders can Raiders can do something here to shift the tide of this game, then that could set a good omen for the second half. Squibs it over to the right hand side, picked up by it looks like number twenty four by the VI Raiders. Andrew Matz catches the ball on the run, gets about four or five yards on the return. Raiders will take over at their own 34, 35 yard line. Let's see if the Raiders can do anything here. Chalcombe. Shotgun formation, so the Raiders aren't going to knee it out or anything like that. They're going to go on on a high. I like this style. Shotgun, he's looking left. Big sack! Big, big sack on the play by number 99 of the Kamloops Broncos. I don't know. I don't have his name, unfortunately, because the name list only goes up to 81. So save your hate mail, please. But great job there by the defensive lineman getting right up the middle. So he's a defensive tackle there. You never like seeing that. That's they got they got to refocus. Generally, when you see something like that, it means their heads are down a little bit. So they got to refocus, get themselves back into this game. Raiders looks like it's a timeout there. Chala comes off talking to. Look to be head coach Curtis Visa and assistant head coach Todd Hansen there and dialing up something. It'll be second and about 20. All right, so. Second and 20. 36 seconds left in the first half. 21 threes for the Camus Broncos. And they hand it off for a quick draw. Not my favorite play call there, but probably the right call in this scenario. Kamloops just called for a timeout, obviously. They're, they're putting their heels back. They think they, there's an opportunity to get some more points here. Number 88. Back for the punt. He's been explosive. He has a touchdown and had an 80-yard run taken back. Some solid returns as well. Looks like they also have back there number, uh, number 15, Jake Belfonte. Cool last name. So Raiders are punting from their own 33-yard line. 32 seconds left in the half. Raiders. Weak punt off to the left-hand side. Only up to the 50. Not a good punt. Only a net of about 20 yards. They negate any return, but not a good punt. Not a good punt at all. The Camus Broncos will take over at the Raiders' 48-yard line. Really a net of only 17 yards on that punt. 20, 20, 20 seconds left, 27 seconds left in the half. Kamloops Broncos, they're coming out gunning. This is not what you this is not what you want. Raiders defense has to step up big here. Now's the time if you can pick up a turnover or do something. They're looking to pass. This time a nice big sack and a fumble and a fumble and Raiders. Get the fumble. Great. Big play. Exactly what the Raiders needed. Turnover. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah, Van Kunit with a tough fumble on the sack there. Raiders take over. That's a big play. It's a big momentum shifter. Looks like the Raiders are going to come out and start 
Start doing something. Try to get some extra points here on the board to finish this half. If they can get a couple points. You can get a couple points after a big turnover. That's a huge switch. Shotgun formation. Look for Pi here. He's been hot. Deep. Another tough, 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 tough. Bad pass. Picked by the Camus Broncos. He's going down the sidelines. Picked there by number two, Scott Polzer. On another ugly looking throw, unfortunately. There seems to be a penalty on the play here, too, by the VI Raiders, it looks like, which could put the Broncos into field goal range. Let's, let's hope it's on the Broncos. So I allow a little bias to come in. It looks like it looks like it is going to be on the Kamloops Broncos on the return. It looks like that was what the referee was signaling. Raiders catch a little break. That was a two. Two pretty. Oh, interesting. And so there was there was two penalties on the play. One was offside by the VI Raiders. That penalty was declined because of the pick. And the the second was uh, uh, unsportsmanlike conduct on the return by the Camus Broncos. So that brings them back 15 yards, which, which takes them out of any sort of field goal position or scoring position. So let's see what they do here if they're going to try and try and uh, go deep here. Again, there's 11 seconds left in the half. Again, the Camus Broncos, 21, Raiders 3. And they decide to run it. Another nice little run by Grigorovich, who gets a solid great 10 yards. Jukin driving and fight. They're content with just running the clock down now to end the half. Is, it do, is a first down. Are they going to do something here? No, it doesn't look like they're. No, they're just gonna. They're gonna. They're gonna run the play clock out. It looks like. Oh, last play. Interesting. Shotgun, and he rolls out left. Gets outside. Oh, off the hands of number 88 there, who's just had a great, great half so far. Absolutely, it's a. Think if uh, I think if I saw this score last last night, it would have sobered me up. At the end of the half, the Kamloops Broncos 21, VI Raiders three. Big big you know, big half by the Kamloops Broncos. Pretty shocking result right now, but we'll see if the Raiders can come out better in the second half. I'm signing off until then.
Be interesting to see what happens here. The Kamloops Broncos coach, uh, Braden Vaconet. Interesting. I wonder if he's. Pardon? Oh, well, well, welcome back, everyone. I've been talking for the last five minutes, but the audio was off, so we're back. It's a uh, don't look twice, but it's the Kamloops Broncos 21. Uh, th thank you very much. Um, Kamloops Broncos 21, Raiders 3. This is the first time in history that the Kamloops Broncos have ever been up on the Vancouver Island Raiders uh, in Nanaimo. So this is some shocking stuff here. Some tough, tough plays by the Raiders in the first half. A fumble on the 15-yard line and just some unfortunate mishaps. A miss, a mi uh, you know, just a missed pass to uh, Dylan Pye, but... The Broncos have taken the ball over at the Raiders 55 yard line. Another run up here by Grigorovich. Like I said, I might be butchering his name, Grigorovich, but it's uh, a great, a great, great run up the middle again. He's been on fire. Looks like a first, uh, but second and two. Kamloops head coach Braden um, Vaconet is uh, dialed up a lot of different looks. And I don't know if they're related, but Reed Vaconet, the quarterback, behind center, shotgun formation, hands the ball off again to Grigorovich. B unbelievable. Grigorovich spins out on second and short, still manages to pick up about two yards, but it should have been a loss of about six yards. Raiders did a great job bringing the blitz right up the middle. But there have been too many arm tackles this game. they got to get a stop. When you got a guy in the backfield on second and short like that, you got to bring him down. Gorovich did a great job to spin off it. The Kamloops Broncos are going for it on third and short here. Watch for the quarterback sneak. It's worked for them all game. And he, he, he looks like he picks it up again for more than enough for the first down. First down, Kamloops Broncos. They take over at the Raiders' 45-yard line. <laughs> if you don't hear me for three seconds, it's because I'm enjoying a delicious Mars Bar chocolate bar. <laughs> Sponsor of today's broadcast, Mmm, Mars. <laughs> A little break in the action. Back in it. Shotgun formation. Trips right. For motion again. And this time they stop him. For right around a no yard game. They tried that jet sweep again, that motion. They've been doing that all day long. Oh my goodness, it looks like we got the second half of the of the uh, the list for the players. Caleb Sens. It's Caleb Sens who's had just an unbelievable day. It looks like he's down on the field right now. Hopefully it's nothing serious. He's had a heck of a game. He's been explosive in both special teams and an offense for the Camelos Broncos. You never like to see this. It looked like he was a little bit twisted up when he went down. Raiders player grabbed him by the back of the jersey and sort of twisted a little bit. But he's up, and it looks like he's walking off the field. You'll love to see that. He's jogging off. That's fantastic. That's what you like to see. That's what you love to hear. He's jogging off. He looks like, you know, I'm no doctor, but it looks like he's going to be okay. He's been phenomenal in that jet sweep, but the Raiders were able to step up and stop him. It's going to be second in about 11 or 12 yards here. It's 12-20 left in the third quarter. Broncos 21, Raiders 3. Back and not behind center. Motion for quads right. Shotgun. Back and not drops back. He's looking left as he does. 
Oh, and oh, just out of the fingertips of Will Adams. And if he was, if he had stepped up a little bit more, there could have been looked like he would gone for six. Looks like it's going to be. There's an offensive penalty. I suspect the Raiders will decline it. Offside by the offense, penalty decline, third and 11. Camels will punt it away right now. Something we haven't seen a lot of is the Camels Broncos punting team, but a good start to the half by the VI Raiders defense. Minimal yardage for by Camloops. Let's see if their offense can follow suit. This was the stop that the VI Raiders needed. Now let's look and see if they can get a big return. Punt by the Camloops Broncos deep. All the way down to the Raiders 10. Will Adams going on the right side, gets to the outside. Oh, he's brought down at about the 20 yard line. There is a penalty on the play. That wasn't Will Adams, sorry. That was number 82, Hayden Davies, with a decent little return. Got to the outside. Let's see where that penalty is. Oh, it looks like it's holding on the VI Raiders. So that'll pin the Raiders back into top field position again. Bring them back to their own, looks to be 10 yard line. <laughs> very, very tough field position to start your offense out again. During the return, holding, 3 1, 10 yard penalty, first down. Looks like a holding penalty on number 81, Aiden Chalmers. Raiders take over from their own 11-yard line. Chalcombe still behind center. Shotgun formation. Takes the snap. Looks like it's going to be a pass. He looks right. Fires out to his right. Looks like that's like Marin Bradbrook. Jukes drives. Oh, my God. He fumbles. He fumbles. Camus Broncos. Another fumble by the VI Raiders in their, behind their own 20-yard line. you got to be kidding me here. You gotta hold on to the ball in that situation. The Camloops Broncos will take over at the VI Raiders 15 yard line for the second time today. And a second fumble inside their own 20. It's not a good, not a good look by the VI Raiders. Not a not the way you you needed to start this half. Great job by the Kamloops Broncos stepping up, making some big plays, getting the turnovers when they need. I believe that's the fourth turnover now by the VI Raiders this game. You can't win games when you have four turnovers. Hand off to Grigorovich, right up the middle. Oh, my goodness. That's, that looks to be darn close to the uh, you know, four or five-yard line of the VI Raiders. But they just... Uh, Take the ball and run it down your throat. That's not the look you need. You got to pin your ears back. You got to play with your heels to that goal line and fire off. Lack of emotion right now can be characterized as the VI Raiders. Doesn't seem to be a lot of excitement. Sidelines a little dead right now. Let's see if they can flip the script and get a turnover of sorts here. They've done it already once this game. Roll out to the right, beat some deep. Oh, just out of the fingertips of number 19, uh, Brock Dufort. A great job by Bach Vancunet, who it almost looked like he'd have ran in there, but decided to pass the ball and just out of his fingertips. Well, it's the, been the story of the Raiders' defense. They need to get that contain. Kamloops will bring on their field goal team here to make it a 21-point game should they hit it.
Looks like there be, looks like there's some sort of confusion on the Kamloops Broncos sidelines of what they're going to do. No, they are going to kick it. Doesn't look like a timeout's going to be taken here. They're going to take the points. I think that's smart in this situation. They're at the 10 yard line, third and five. Oh, flags everywhere. So successful field goal on the play by number 48, Cadence Keepness, who's been perfect today. Flags flying everywhere. Too many men on the Kamloops Broncos, so it looks like they're going to have to kick this field goal over again from a little bit further out. So the three points will come off the board. Still 21-3. They'll have to kick it from around their own 15-yard line. Makes it about a 22-yard field goal. Okay, Keepness will come out here. Seems to be well within his range. Okay. From about the 20 or 18 yard line, keep this. It's up and it is wide right, wide right. Right to Will Adams. He takes it out of the end zone. Oh my goodness though. I don't think that was the right call. Will Adams takes it out of the end zone but he only gets it to about the four yard line it looks like. Pitting the Raiders back. An awful field goal or field position, but no points. You know that that penalty takes off any points for the Kamloops Broncos, which is a major positive. Well, I guess if you get it out, you get it at the twenty-yard line, so that's good. So still nine thirty-two left in the third quarter. Broncos twenty-one, Raiders three. Child come on the field, takes over, shotgun formation. Takes the snap, rolls out right, takes a hit, but gets it out to his receiver. Aaron Gordon, number 12. Nice little catch, a little run for about an eight, nine yard game. It's nice to see them get Aaron Gordon involved. Big, 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 big play. First down was more than eight yards, about 10 yard gain there. Nice to see Aaron Gordon get involved. Aaron Gordon and Marion Bradbury have been pretty quiet so far to this game. In fact, the whole Raiders offense has been quiet since the first quarter. Let's see if they can change that. Big, big run on the, by the VI Raiders there for about a five, six yard gain. Uh-oh, flag on the play. Aloysius Kuhn with the uh, run there. It's his first run in a little bit, but he had Every run is gone for a few yards, but it looks like this one might be brought back. If you see the if you see the Camus Broncos, they're sort of giving the indication that the penalty is going to be on the VI Raiders. We'll see what happens here. Refs meeting. Everybody wants an opinion. Taking forever. Looks like the penalty is going to be on the VI Raiders. Hard to see what it, what happened there. Oh, unnecessary roughness penalty. I didn't see anything there. Refs have been throwing flags left, right, and center. Now it has been both ways. It hasn't been one sided, but you know, I didn't see an unnecessary roughness penalty there. But here the uh, it was. So the Raiders pin back again at their own 20-yard line. Second in about 25. Shamalak from the right-hand side. He looks deep right. Big, nice pass. Caught by Marin Bradbrook. That's what the VI Raiders needed. That was the first beautiful pass by Chalakom to Marin Bradbrook. That's the connection they need. They, that's the sort of deep shot. That's what they're looking for. Great job. 
They're going to a hurry-up offense here. I like it. Shotgun formation. Trips left. They're getting fired up. Chalkum's going to take the snap. It's a pass. He's looking left. Way overthrow there by number 29. How that wasn't an a unsportsmanlike conduct penalty. It was well over the head. The refs don't call a, call a penalty there, which is freaking ridiculous if you ask me. But I'm just a play-by-play -play guy. Ridic ridiculous stuff. I don't know if anybody's picking up the coaches on my broadcast, but some choice words before the officials by them, but I agree with them. Anyway, so the Raiders will pick, pick up second and 10 from their about the 55 yard line, or the Broncos 53. Shotgun. Chalicom takes a snap. It's a pass. He's looking right. He's looking for Marin again. Oh, no, that's not Marin. It's a deep catch by number one, Dylan Pye. Big play. Big throw. Big catch. The referees. Oh, no, it's going to be on the Kamloops Broncos. Thank God. There would have been a riot here at NDS Stadium if there was a penalty on the play. I may have thrown my headset and charged the field myself. Unnecessary roughness on the defense, it looked like. That penalty is declined. Big, what looked to be about a 45-yard pass to from Ben Chamalock to uh, Dylan Pye, who's had a great game so far today. A little bit quiet since the first quarter, but he found himself open again. The Raiders seem fired up, a little bit more emotion. And it's a nice jet sweep, fake option. Right, right to Aloysius Kuhn for about a gain of about eight yards. Every time the kid's had the ball, he's made plus yardage, plus yardage, plus yardage. And he, keeps, he seems to be getting better as the game goes by. This is the momentum shift the VI Raiders needed. It brought some life back into this field, the life back into the beer gardens, to the sidelines, and in this booth. A quick QB sneak. Looks like he's going to have more than enough. For the first down. Oh, it's close. I don't know if they, yep. First down. First down for the VI Raiders at the Kamloops Broncos. Ten, eight yard line. Eight to ten yard line. The score is 21 to three for the Kamloops Broncos. 6.42 left in the third quarter. The Raiders are marching. Two big passes. One from, oh, they, this drive started all the way down at their, it got as low as uh, I think the ten yard line. Shamalak behind center. Looks left. Oh, just in and out of the hands of Aaron Gordon, number 12. Big, big, big stop there by the Broncos. I think if I'm coaching, this is three down territory from this close. Three score game, you need to score a touchdown here. All right. Shotgun, I'm guessing, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to guess, pass here, it is. He's looking right. Oh, he's going deep. He has his receiver, and it's gone! A beautiful throw, a beautiful catch. It's hard to see who made that catch from here. It looks like that was Jackson French, was it? Paul Romanoff. Paul Romanoff with the big catch. Great pass. When he tossed that ball up, I didn't know where he was going with it. Right into the hands of the VI Raiders receiver. And the VI Raiders are right back in this game. It's going to go for the extra point. The Broncos, 21. Raiders, 9. Six minutes left in the third quarter. Raiders kick it through the uprights. Kamloops Broncos 21, Raiders 10. Big, big, big drive by the VI Raiders. They needed it. It came at the right time. Pinned back as deep as their own 10-yard line. Two 40-plus yard passes by Chamalock to both to both Marin and uh, and Dylan Pye. You know, 
big turnaround right here. And then to finish it off there with a great touchdown. Yeah. As my colleague up here has said, the big crowd out for tonight's game. And Beer Garden seems to be pretty packed. People are having a good time. The weather stayed great. There was a little sprinkle of rain for the grass earlier today, and uh, now it's uh, just BEA beautiful. Raiders kick off, return, good looking return. Broncos get up to their own 30 yard line. It's gotta put a little bit more flight on that ball, I think, because the Raiders have consistently been given up some decent sized returns. But 30 yard line, that's not too bad. Raiders, or Camus Broncos take over. Let's see if they can, if the Raiders can stop them or if Camus responds. Banking it. In shotgun formation. A lot of motion. Look for a little right pat, or run right up the middle by Gregorovich. Again, this kid might be five foot two, 110 pounds soaking wet, but he's playing like Marshawn Lynch out there. Trucking people left, right, and center. Moving, you know, inside and outside, spinning off of arm tackles. Raiders have got to start laying the boom on this guy. Kid's been playing great so far. Gain, gain on the play there. About, looks to be about nine yards. Nine yards. So second and short again, a position that Camus has been in a lot. They're going in a shotgun formation. Look for the big play here. I expect they'll go for it on third and, third and one if they don't hit it. But instead, they get hand the ball off to Grigorovich. And he'll get the easy first down. Breaks again about three or four Raiders arm tackles. They got to start breaking down. They got to start laying the boom a little bit. Wrap the guy up. Guys. Gorovich is playing fantastic. That looked to be about a... 15-yard gain there by Gregorovich. He's probably well over 100 yards now. Back in it. Shotgun. Hands the ball off again because it's working every single time. And they looks like you stopped them, but it still gains about six, five yards there. A little extra effort at the end to get that extra yard, and they're going to give it to them. So second and five for the Kamloops Broncos. They gotta find a way to stop this run game. Raiders have been doing okay against the pass, but they gotta they gotta get some a little bit more pressure. This is the story in game one. Oh offside there, flags flown everywhere. Seems like there's, yeah, refs are coming together to talk this one out. So up to you on the score currently. The Kamloops Broncos, 21. VI Raiders, 10. Let's get my mother in on this. 3.25 left in the third quarter. Refs taking their time again. Oh, an awful time offside penalty by the VI Raiders. I didn't see it. But you, you have to be aware. Second and five, and you take a, a five-yard penalty. It'll bring it down to like second, and, or second and one or second and half a yard. Look for a run from Gregorovich or a QB sneak, which seems to be working for them. 
Yeah, it'll be second and about a yard for the Kamloops Broncos. All right. Let's see what Kamloops does here. I wouldn't be surprised if they went for a shot. Looks like quads right. Shotgun formation. He's looking back. He's looking left. And he's going deep. I called it. Just over the hands of number 85, Chris Finden. Still second and short. I would bet my best dollar that they're going to go for it here. And I bet my second best dollar that they're going to do a QB sneak. Banconet under center and a QB sneak. I was right on both things. Nice little hit on him this time, but still well enough for the first down. Camus gets picks up the first down. They're just not getting not getting enough pressure. The VI Raiders defensive line has to do something here. They have to get off the ball. Go make a big play. This is this is where you make your bread and butter. Takes a snap. Hands the ball off to Grigorovich again. And this time, a nice stop by the VI Raiders. That's how you group tackle. That's better. Everybody flowing to the ball. Nobody standing around watching. That's VI Raiders defensive football. That's what you like to see. Hopefully that sets the tempo going forward because they need it. Big stop, only a gain of about one, one and a half, and that was a good spot for him. Banking it. Watch for a jet sweep here to 88. I'm trying my best to be Tony Romo right now. Mind you, we haven't seen him. We haven't seen him. You know, he's back in there. 17 off to the left side. Trips right. Banking it takes a snap. He's looking right. Oh, and he takes off, curls off to the right side, gets a deep, oh, just out of the reach of number 11, Evan Guizzo. And good job by the VI Raiders. They kept contained. Yes, he rolled out and stepped underneath it, but it took him off rhythm and helped force that pass a little bit outside and out of the reach of Guizmo. So it looks like the Camus Broncos will punt it here from their own or from the Raiders' 48-yard line. Big stop. The Raiders needed that. 21-10 game. Broncos punting. Third and eight. 128 left in the third quarter. Big punt. Way down. Raiders catch it on the run. Again, I don't see how that isn't no yards. The guy's standing right next to him. Guy's standing right next to him. No call on the play. All right, so the Raiders will take over right, right around their own 20-yard line or so, 25-yard line. Okay field possession. Let's see, a couple big passes by Chalicum in the last drive. Getting Marin Bradbrook involved in the game. Aaron Gordon a little bit more involved in the game. And Dylan Pye has been fantastic. Raiders receiving corps looking strong. Chalicum, shotgun, pass. He's looking, he's rolling out to his left-hand side. Right, deep pass, 29, caught! Unbelievable! Unbelievable, another big pass, VI Raiders! By number 29 there, he's not on my list. He was the kid who just scored the touchdown. Oh, a flag? You gotta be kidding me. I'll keep your flags in their stinking pockets. Unbelievable. 58 seconds. These guys have thrown more freaking orange than I've ever seen in a game. They may be a little cranky because I'm hungover, but geez Louise, they can't keep their flags in the freaking pockets. 
58 seconds left in the third quarter. Broncos 21, Raiders 10. It's a holding call. He can call holding every stinking play. Unbelievable. Tough break by the VI Raiders. Guys just really walking around the field like they own the place, these stripes today. But that's just my own humble opinions, not the feelings of the BCFC or the VI Raiders. Shahagom behind center. Shotgun formation. He's looking. He's looking deep again. Great protection by the O-line. Flag comes out again. Unstick it believable. you got to be kidding me. Holy freaking smokes. Another flag, but this time it's on the Camus Broncos. I, I don't care who it's on. they got to put the freaking things in their pocket. I think, I think it was holding. Usually in that sort of vicinity, it's holding. But it looks like it could be on the Broncos. Who knows what they're seeing out there today? Hands to the face. Obviously, that was a great call. <laughs> nice to see it. Great, great call there. Great, great call there. <laughs> <laughs> Even a blind leopard can find water every now and then. So, Raiders take over at their own 40-yard line. Shotgun formation. Chalcom looking for a pass again. He's fired up. He's throwing deep. Oh, my goodness. He's got a man open, and it's caught. It is caught. Holy freaking moly. It looked like Riker Pearson. Jolcom's had, Jolcom's had about four straight passes, about 40 plus yards. Raiders are driving again, 21-10. 13 seconds, this looks to be the last play of the third quarter. Things are getting exciting. Flag before the even play starts again. Six seconds left. Unbelievable. Another penalty. Wow. Remember in the first quarter when we said this game was going fast? Well, they've slowed it right down. Might not, might not be out of here till about 10 o'clock today. Offside on the Raiders. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Another penalty. Alrighty, Raiders take over. First and 15 from the Kamloops 35 yard line. They're passing now. They're fired up. Chalcom's looking. He's rolling out right. He finds his receiver. Number one, Dylan Pye again. Beautiful about. What looks, what looks to be about a 10-yard game. Quarter time. Look at this. That's end of the third quarter. VI Raiders, Camus Broncos. Broncos up 21 to 10. Broncos up 21 to 10. And wow, the Raiders have turned the momentum. It, they all of a sudden woke right up. It's been excellent. This has been kind of, has been kind of fun. Some, some Yahoo down there has his mic on and is yelling some stuff. <laughs> Let's try to keep it professional. <laughs> <laughs> Family event. A little bit of quarter time. That means a break for our Snickers. Chamalak, right, wide center. 
Looking left. No, it sees his receiver. He's open in the end zone. Oh, it's a touchdown. What a catch. What a catch. Dylan Pye. What a freaking catch. Are you kidding me? Unstinking believable. Shades of Beckham. Shades of Odell Beckham Jr. Dylan Pye having the game of his young Raiders career so far. Big throw by Jocko. Big catch by Dylan Pye. Raiders have, are marching back. Unbelievable. 15 seconds in the fourth quarter. First play of the fourth is a big touchdown. And he's feeling it out there. Shades of Jordan Yance yeah, before him. Oh, they're going for two here. This is shocking. Drops back, make it a, look to make it a three-point game. Good call. Oh, it's well over the hands. It's picked. Decides not to do anything for it, so remains a five-point game. Broncos 21, Raiders 16. This has been a tale of two halves. Raiders off of multiple big passes by Chalco. To all different receivers. Aaron Gordon getting involved. Marion Bradbrook getting involved. Dylan Pye getting involved. Unbelievable job. Now we need that Raiders defense to stand pat. They've done a good job. Here in the second half, holding Camus to nothing. Two big touchdowns here by the Raiders. That's this is exciting stuff. This is a big, big, big game, right? I, a lot have been made for the bias BCFC about the Okanagan Sun and West Shore game. Who cares about that? This is a huge game. Kamloops and VI Raiders, and this could mean a, a playoff spot with Langley 0 and 3 and Chillock looking extremely strong. Could be a battle between these two teams to get that fourth and final playoff spot. Kickoff by the Raiders. Kamloops, nice little return by number 15. Oh, it looked like a fumble. It looked like a fumble. They have called. The referee saying that. Referee has not made a announcement yet. Oh, he's saying Broncos football. Raiders have the ball, though. But they're saying Broncos football for some unknown stinking reason. Guy's standing there. The ball came out. Refs have not been doing any favors to their own self. <laughs> I'll tell you one thing, they shouldn't end, exit through the beer gardens this afternoon. Hey, let's go, deep. <laughs> I'd hightail it to the other side of the stadium, switch shirts, let's go, deep. and get into a disguise before you leave the stadium here today because there's some upset people with the officials. Camels take over at their own 30-yard line. Shotgun formation. Hands the ball off. Unbelievable. Grigorovich again fighting for more yards. This kid's been phenomenal. Big 20-yard gain. Not what the Raiders wanted there, with the momentum being so firmly on their side. This kid running the ball right up the gut. Right up the heart of that Raiders defense. We'll see. It might be smart for them to go right back to it. Some great, great, great running by the Kamloops Broncos today. They've been phenomenal on the ground. They haven't been bad in the air either, but they haven't really had to be. Their offense has looked really strong. Just Raiders' offense has sort of fired back, and they haven't really got a chance to get any momentum here in the second half. Walking it, hands the ball off again. Grigorovich, this time Raiders do a good job of swarming to the football. Grigorovich gets about four or five yards. Still a decent, impressive run. Oh, it looks only to be about two yards. That's good. 
Raiders are making lots of different substitutions on the defensive line right now. Fresh legs in. Second and long. This would be a huge stop right now if the Raiders are able to force them to punt in, into a punting situation. Bankinet, back and shotgun, trips right. Gregorovich in the backfield. Takes the snap, looks left, looks left. He has a Raider swarms and a big sack by the Vancouver Island Raiders. Are you kidding me? Right when they needed a big, big play. It looked like number five there. Number five or number 27. It looked like to me, number five, Jason Henderson with the big sack on the play. It was either him or number 27, Will Adams. Both were celebrating like they made the play. Pulling one of my moves. Fantastic stuff. That's exactly the momentum shifter that, you know, to keep the momentum on the Raiders side, that's what they needed. Raiders offense making big plays, and then right behind it, Raiders defense. Reminding the Camus Broncos why they have never beaten the Vancouver Island Raiders. This is shaping up to be a fantastic fourth quarter. Oh, and it looks like there's going to be another play clock violation by the Kamloops Broncos. This time, it's making them look a little bit frazzled. Getting a little bit shaky over there on that Kamloops sideline. Broncos punting now from their own 35-yard line. Big punt. Nice leg. And a return on the play. How? There was. Okay. Good, good, good. Finally, the refs make a good call and call no yards. They've missed the last four. It's the only time they've kept the flag in their pocket. So, should be a no yards penalty. But there is a flag back at where the ball was punted. Because, you know, everybody wants to get on the action. We'll see what the call is. What is going on here? It looks like it is against the Kamloops Broncos. That's probably the no yards penalty. Refs are going to tell us here now. Oh, for Pete's sake. Freaking. They're calling more unnecessary roughness penalties than I've ever seen in my freaking life. But with the no yards being a five yard penalty and on Sportsman like being a 15 yard penalty, it's a net 10 yard less by the VR Raiders. They take over at their own 33 yard line. First and 10. The score is 21 Kamloops, 16 Raiders with 11 minutes and 40 seconds left in the fourth quarter. Chamalak drops back. He's looking deep. This time the Broncos come up with a big sack on first down for a loss of probably about three to four yards there. There's a sack there, but it can't be said enough that the Raiders offensive line doing just a fantastic job of protecting Chalicom. That time Broncos made a big play. All right. Raiders, second and 12, 30 yard line. Chalicum behind him center, trips right. Passing situation. He's looking left. He looks, fires deep. He has a receiver. Dylan Pye again. Oh, did he make the catch? Oh, but there's a penalty. First of all, it looked like he made the catch. Second of all, there's a penalty. Ref's running back. To go talk to the other four refs. Oh, really? Looks like, looks like pass interference on the Kamloops Broncos. Another big penalty. This time going on the Raiders. This time going into the Raiders. 15-yard penalty. Automatic first down. 
on a, on a pass interference penalty. I'll, I'll take it. Don't know if I saw it. So Raiders will take the ball, take take things over at their own 45. First and 10. 10 minutes, 50 seconds left in the fourth quarter. Shaw coming, shotgun formation. He's looking. He's rolling out to his right hand side. He's looking deep again. He's looking for Merritt Bradbrook, who just can't quite get the can't quite get to the ball, uh, to the ball. Little bit off target there. Beer Gardens are getting a little fired up there. I would say that was a good no call. Raiders are uh, second and ten from their own 45. Raiders have seemed to abandon their run game for good cause. Chalicombe's been fantastic. Tossing the ball in the second half. He probably has at least 200 yards passing now. Shotgun. Trips left. Chalicombe's looking left already. He's looking at his receiver. He's, he has time. He's breaking out. There is a pe penalty flag, which means which everybody must be surprised in. He drops the ball. He fumbles it. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. So it looks like there was a holding call anyways, but the Bronco, uh, this is, again, another turnover by the VI Raiders. They're doing so well, but inopportune times in their own territory. Below their 30-yard line, you just can't win games that way. Blocking below the waist penalty that's obviously going to be declined. Chalcombe has been playing so well in the second half, just gets a little bit too lazy with the ball. Fumbles it. Broncos ball. Shotgun, hands the ball off to Grigorovich again. Fights. This time Raiders stop him, flatten his tracks for about a two-yard gain. Big stop there by the VI Raiders. Yeah, for about, just about a yard. Second and nine, Kamloops. Raiders defense has really stepped up in the second, in the second half, allowing zero points. They've been put in some difficult situations today. They need to step up here. Three fumbles in your own end, in, underneath your own 30-yard line. It's not going to do you any favors. But Second and nine. Raiders look to be bringing some heat. They back off. And a big, big play, big pass, big catch for the touchdown for the Kamloops Broncos. Number 85, Chris Finden. Just playing a little bit too passive for my like in that sort of situation. They were showing blitz and they dropped back, which should have been a zone, but it didn't look like it. And Finden goes for the touchdown. Not a lot of tackling there. Ran through a couple arm tackles and gets to the end zone and stops the Raiders in their tracks. Kamloops Broncos now 27, Raiders 16 with 9 minutes and 4 seconds left in the game. Raiders fans are starting to sweat a bit. Again, turnovers have been the biggest differentiating factor in this game. Three turnovers within their own 30-yard line, two within their own 15. All three have turned into touchdowns for the Kamloops Broncos. I think the Raiders now have five turnovers on the game. You just can't win games that way. So the Raiders will try. Kickoff return team set on the field. See what kind of uh, magic they can pull out. The Raiders have been explosive on offense here in the second half. Counting for almost, I would say, 200, 250 yards of net offense. So let's see if they can keep that, that thing rolling. This game is not over. There's nine minutes left. Oh, four. Kickoff 
by the Broncos. Short to the left-hand side. They must be really worried about the return team. I don't know. But, oh, big truck, big truck by the linebacker. Doesn't get much extra yards, but it's fun to watch on TV. Guy ran over him like a kid got depleted. It's always nice to see. Raiders take over at their own 35-yard line. All right. So we're sitting. Broncos 28, Raiders 16 with a successful PAT attempt after the last touchdown. Eight minutes, 57 seconds left in this football game. The Kamloops Broncos have never beat the VI Raiders, so this is, a, this is a very, very big game for Kamloops. Can they hold on? Pass by Chalicum out to the right side. Big, big catch. Oh! It's hard to tell on those sidelines. He just stepped up, but another big catch by Dylan Pye, who's been phenomenal this game. Found ways to get open. Looked like he had more, but a solid 20-yard gain. Chalicum's heating up again. Chumalak. Chumalak takes the snap. He's looking. He's rolling it right. He's looking. There's Aaron Gordon for a nice catch on the sidelines. Nice throw. Nice catch. Easy peasy. Great play, Raiders are driving. Another 20 yard play. Shamalak to Aaron Gordon. Getting all his big name receivers involved. Let's see what he can do here. Looks like a trip, trips left formation. It's gonna be a pass. He's looking left. He sees his receiver. Catch, great way to slip off the, the tackle. Another 10, 12-yard gain there. Looks like that one was number 83, Hayden Day, who's also had a pretty good day today. No pun intended. But he is, looks like he's injured on the field right now, which isn't what you like to see. Raiders trainers and personnel quick out there to go take a look at him. Both players, yeah, both, both, both the uh, Kamloops Bron Broncos players and the Raiders player are down right now. You never like to see a collision like this, so. Trainers rapidly there to go help out. So we take another break in the action, just like to thank all of, uh, all of the VI Raiders sponsors, in particular Quality Foods, the best place to shop. And uh, yeah. So as we wait, hopefully um, players look to be a little bit banged up there. Hopefully everything's okay. It's hard to see from up here. We don't have a camera. Yeah, it's hard to hard to see hard to see what's going on down there. But hopefully they're doing okay. Raiders players up. It's like Hayden Day. Walking off to the sideline, looks like he's going to be okay. All right. Oh, it looks like the Camus Broncos player. It's tough to make out his number from here. Looks like he's a little bit more hurt, hopefully. Limping off, a little bit of issue, what looks like to be a lower left leg injury, so hopefully he's okay. You never like to see injuries on the football field, so it's a tough game. All righty. Okay, now it's second and short, that last catch by by uh, aforementioned day, went for about eight yards. Looks like they're gonna get go behind center and they're gonna run it for a good sort of QB sneak it for about a four or five yard gain. Great job. 
Looked like the backup quarterback was in for that one. No, that was Chamalak. So a nice run by him. Rolls out on the right-hand side. Chamalak looks deep. Looking for Marin Bradbrook and just out of his fingertips. My goodness. Almost almost another big play there by the VI Raiders. Chamalak has found his rhythm with his arm. It, it looks like a different player in the second half. We'll see. So now it's second, second and ten. Seven minutes, 23 seconds left. Broncos 28, Raiders 16. Shamalek behind, behind center. Shotgun formation. He's got trips on the right. Twins on the left. He's looking right. He's looking right. Rolling out in the pocket now. Getting great time by his offensive line. Oh, he finds a guy. Oh, just off the fingertips of the linebacker number four. Ibram Fibo, and if he didn't tip that ball, it looked like it was going to land right into the VI Raiders receiver's hands. Looks like the Raiders, it's third, third and ten for the Raiders. They will go for it. They're in three down territory. With six minutes left, down two scores. Raiders down 12 points right now. Shotgun formation. It's going to be a pass here. Broncos bring the blitz. He looks left. Sees Aaron Gordon, but off his fingertips. And that'll be a turnover on downs for the Raiders. Just over the hands of Aaron Gordon. Good effort to bring him in there, but that will be a turnover. So the Raiders defense really needs to step up here. Broncos have 28. Raiders are down to 16. 12 point game with under seven minutes left. Now's the time you go for broke. You got to bring some heat. You got to bring some, get that ball back as fast as humanly possible. There's a lot of pride in this. The Kamloops Broncos have never beat the VI Raiders in their entire history. I believe they've been around for. 17 years or something close to that. So this would be a this would be a big, 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 big victory for this franchise. And sets huge playoff ramifications. We could look for the first time in years where we have the Chilliwack Huskers and Camus Broncos in the playoffs and the Langley Rams and Vancouver Island Raiders out of the playoffs. Going back, if you know the history of this BCFC over the last 20 years, that's almost unthinkable. Uh, referee timeout here. As we wait for Vankinet to take over again under center. Will be interesting. It was a beautiful Saturday night. Raiders fans here are getting are getting nervous. Okay, Bank and Net. Shock information. They're not they're not resting on their walls. Look for some runs to Grigorovich. Raiders are doing exactly what I said. It looks like they're bringing some heat. They're coming after him. They know they're going to probably hand this ball off right now. Run this clock down. And they go and they drop the pass. Raiders bring a lot of heat. Well over the hands. See, this is just a fantastic look at it. You bring a little bit of heat. It got it got Van Kinnett a little bit nervous there. He overthrows number 88. It's good to see him back in the game. Caleb Sens, who's just been phenomenal all day long. Got a little injured there in the third quarter, but he's back. Just right there, they brought a little bit of heat, and you could see he threw it off his back feet, got nervous. Might be a little too little too late, but they gotta continue, they gotta continue to bring some bring some heat here. 
And it looks that's what they're doing. Making that looks like he's looks like it's gonna be a run situation. No, he play action passes it. And he's looking deep and he finds a receiver for what looks to be a first down. Contain an issue again there. Baconet did a good job of, he got initially worried, great play action pass, they bit on it. Gets outside, makes the easy 10 yard out, throw, pitch and catch. First down for the Kamloops Broncos. Well, from their own 45 yard line, making it behind center again. This time he'll hand the ball off to uh, right down the Raiders middle. Oh my goodness. That just can't happen. That cannot happen. Number 11, Evan Guizzo, takes the ball for about a 65 yard run for the touchdown. This game is all but over, ladies and gentlemen. It's uh, the beer guards are starting to flood out now. This is not good. You know, you can't you can't allow a run up the gut in a uh, when you're down. 12 points in the fourth quarter like that, and the Raiders just did for a 65-yard touchdown. Poor tackling. Not good. Not good stuff. It's That's the tell. The Raiders' pass defense has been solid, but their run defense has been poor. Kamloops Broncos now 34 or 35. The Raiders 16 with five minutes and 22 seconds left in the game. Unbelievable, this is just shocking when you think that the Raiders only allowed seven points by the same Kamloops Broncos team in Kamloops two weeks ago. And for them to be able to put up 35 is, is a bit shocking. Some bad luck though too uh, for the uh, VI Raiders defense, I mean they got Multiple turnovers, and these things catch up with you. I mean, you got five turnovers, three fumbles within your own 30-yard line. You know, all that led to touchdowns, that's going to really hurt your chances. And then, you know, even, you know, no matter what, you're going to get bad breaks like what you just saw there. But tough, tough game for the VI Raiders. In the same vein, congratulations to the Kamloops Broncos, who... They will come away with their first ever victory against the Vancouver Island Raiders, which is something else. Obviously, this team has sort of developed. They've had some tough years in the past, but they are uh, they're turning their program around, which is exciting for them. Not as much for us, but it's exciting for them. Let's see what. Uh, let's see how. Let's see the resolve in the Raiders in this last little bit. I mean, remember, it's uh, the Raiders did get a victory, but that extra, they still are fighting for points here because it goes to uh, it goes to, to uh, head to head and then points in the BCFC. So if the Raiders can score a couple touchdowns and get in, in between seven points here, then that would really help them in the long run. But. Oh, big, big, big play. Big sack by number 16, Maurice Onimianu, with the big thing. But it looks like the refs are going to call that roughing the passer or face masking on the quarterback, which will be a 15-yard penalty. So the Raiders will get the ball 15 yards up and take over at around the their own 53-yard line. Definitely an interesting, definitely an interesting, uh, interesting game here. But that was, uh, it looked to be a pretty obvious penalty there from where I was standing, or the refs called it pretty blatantly. But a lot of penalties this game on both sides. It wasn't really uh, back and forth, but it was some inopportune times for the VI Raiders and the Kamloops Broncos. A lot of some points off the board. But this is going to come down. There is a lot to be left in this last four minutes. If the Raiders can get a couple touchdowns and get below that seven points, then they'll win the season series with Kamloops. If not, Kamloops will win. Raiders look left off 
what looked to be Aaron Gordon's fingertips on the left-hand side. Incomplete pass, second down. Four thirty-seven left in the game. Broncos thirty-five, Raiders sixteen. Okay, the ref's calling it. Ref's getting a little saucy with one of the guys on the sidelines. Another break in the action here. It's about the 94th break in the action this game. The Raiders are lining up shotgun formation. Trips right. Chamalak looks right. Finds his receiver. Dylan Pye again. Makes a great catch. Oh, he's hurt, and I think they're going to give him the catch. They are going to give him the catch, but he, he is looking hurt. Raiders trainer going out there unbelievably fast. Not good. You don't like those non-contact injuries ever. He's holding it up. Hopefully it's maybe a cramp or a, a Charlie horse or something like that. Maybe he's a lot, maybe got the wind knocked out of him. I hope those are, okay. yeah. <laughs> Trying to wake him up here a little bit. Yeah. It looks like he may have just got the wind knocked out of him. He looks like he's bending his knees, so there's nothing, you know, doesn't look like it's something that we have to worry about too much. Never like seeing this, especially at the end of a game that's pretty much been solved. Yeah, the um, gives both teams a chance to take a knee. Hopefully, hopefully he's okay. Yeah, taking care of him. Hopefully he's okay. He's drinking up some water here. But yeah, if you if you look at today's game, I mean, it's a tale about the unbelievable job the Broncos did on the ground by a variety of players. Well, there have been. You know, number uh, number 24, Cameron Gregorovich. I'm sorry if I mispronounced your name. Mine's Walsh's name. It's bad. But uh, he was phenomenal today, running through running through tackle after tackle after tackle, uh, picking up extra yards in almost every play. From up here, he doesn't look like the biggest guy of all time, but he was running through every single tackle that the Raiders tried to attempt on him, uh, picking up more yards after more yards after more yards on countless occasions. Then you got to give your hats off to Caleb Sens, who, you know, he he just looked phenomenal in, uh, in all aspects of the game. Got a huge, 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 huge update from the – Okanagan Sun and West Shore Rebels game. Uh, the Sun are up 37 to 8 uh, just before the half. Pretty shocking result. Um, yeah, it's uh, it's it's crazy. I I didn't suspect that. I thought the West Shore Rebels were going to go in there and take it to Okanagan, but uh, no, it looks like uh, Okanagan's playing some darn good football. It looks like they have uh, you know off to early lead. On the plus side, it looks like uh, looks like Dylan Pye's walking off, so that's good. You never like to see it. Hopefully, it was just a cramp or a Charlie horse or something along those lines. But the fact that he's walking off is a great sign, so you love hearing that. We'll be back to our action now.
All right. The referees are disagreeing on what down it is. They, they decided to rock, paper, scissors, and it's second down. Raiders go for the quick, for the quick QB sneak, gets the first down. First down, Raiders. They got to jump up to the ball quickly here. They got to get things going fast. There is, like I said, there is something. Even if they can't quite come back and win this game, getting to, you know, getting a couple quick scores can help them in the long-term tie break. Sean look, look, looks left, looks right. He finds his receiver right in the middle. Number 83, Hayden Day. He obviously is feeling better now too, back in the game. Another big catch. No, that was number 82. My apologies, 82, Hayden Davies. So my apologies there. Nice catch by him. Shumluck behind center. Oh, bad snap. He looks low. He picks the ball up. Passes it out, still gets it off Aaron Gordon's hands, out of bounds. Raiders and the fans aren't happy with that. Roughing the, it looks like uh, penalties thrown there. I don't know if it's going to be on the Raiders or the Broncos, the Beer Gardens, and up here, whatever you say, there was a little bit of a roughing play, trying to tackle number 12. Aaron Gordon for about 15 yards after the ball was obviously out of his hands. Refs didn't call anything until about five minutes later when the beer gardens started yelling obscenities to them. But we'll see if it's because of the... If the Raiders are getting the penalty, if the Camus Broncos, or perhaps they're going to give a penalty to the beer gardens. Who knows? Oh, my God. A ah, ridiculous call. Just a stupid freaking call. You know, you guys, I can't believe it. Yeah, the referee 65 thinks he's uh, he's roughing the Super Bowl here and wants his face on TV. So, anyways, Chumlock behind center, looks left, rolls out, finds finds his finds his receiver, and it goes right into the two Raiders receivers. Unfortunately, neither of them were able to come up with the ball. No flag on the play here, shockingly. We have another Raiders player down. Uh, okay, the Raiders trainer is getting her sprints in today. For, you can come out helping a few Raider players now. Other players down. Regardless of the penalties and the ridiculous nature of the referees today, on both sides, it hasn't been necessarily on uh, just VI or, or Kamloops, but they've been th throwing the f flag more times than I've seen birds today. It's uh, it, 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 the game should be really come down to run defense by the VI Raiders and turnovers by the Raiders offense. I mean, you take away you take away some of these turnovers and you stop the run a little bit, and the Raiders have this victory. But unfortunately, it was the run defense that run run defense just they absolutely just got beat up. And uh, and you know, and then when you when you put the your own defense in tough spots over and over and over again, five turnovers, I think maybe six uh, by the VI Raiders, that is not a recipe for success against any team ever, uh, particularly when those turnovers happen on your uh, within your own 15 yard line, which happened a couple times today. Shotgun formation. Chomalek steps back, looks deep on the left side. He's looking. For his receiver, number 15 there, out of his arm's reach. And that was third down, so the Broncos will take over on a turnover on downs. And I would assume they're going to try and run this bad boy out. Two minutes, 45 seconds left in the, uh, in the half. Broncos 35, Raiders 16. 
Like you said, I wouldn't, I wouldn't pin this too much on the Raiders' defense. They were put in a lot of tough situations. And to only, to only allow 35 points, you know, when, you know, 21 of those points were turnovers within your own 30-yard line is pretty, pretty decent. Uh, but, you know, the running game and the extension of drives, they got to lock up that run defense and get maybe a little bit more pressure on pass, bring a little bit more blitzes, which they haven't done. Because when they did, it seemed to be successful. New running back in the game, number 33. Uh, number 33, Jacob Mapoyo with another with a ni nice run. Another about eight, nine yard run there. Carrying on from what Gregor Gregorovich was doing earlier. It's pride time now for the BI Raiders. They gotta hunker down, make some plays. Looks like a timeout by the I don't know if it's the officials or if it was uh, the Camus Broncos there. Oh, no, there's an injured player on the field, but he's walking off right now. So, Number 10, number 10 for the Camus Broncos. Clark Snyder, he looks like he's okay. Oh, no, it was a, it was a timeout. So that's the quarterback, new quarterback in for Camus Broncos, number 10. Uh, Caleb Schneider. So Camus giving some time to some of their younger players here. Let's see what they can do. It's always nice to see some different faces in there and getting a chance to get their first action, the CGFL. Handoff again. Some great jukes and jives. Fantastic effort. Another flag. Yeah, there was, uh, obviously, we had gone two plays without a flag. The referee said, we cannot have that. So, out comes another one. We didn't want to, you know, we didn't want to make this game end any quicker than 9 p.m. So, at 8.17, we can expect at least four or five. Multiple flags on that play. One's on each, each side, offsetting. It seems to me with two minutes left in the game, you don't, you don't even really have to throw that. But they did. And here, they're going to talk about it now. So, as we sit and we talk about meaningless flags with two minutes left in the game, you have to give up, you have to do a lot of, give a lot of credit to the Camus Broncos, their coaching staff. Um, yeah, Braden... Uh, Valkanet, uh, Dave Kiggins, the defensive coordinator, are doing a great job holding the VI Raiders offense to only 16 points, awesome. forcing five turnovers. I mean, that's sort of understated right now in the game. Yeah. Well, just so you guys know, the refs just called a couple offsetting penalties with a net of a five yard, so it means nothing, but they took them 45 minutes to figure it out. Now, going to back to the action finally. Quarterback in shotgun formation. They have number 33, Jacob Mapoyo, in the backfield. Look for him to run it out here. They do. Mapoyo inside, outside. Oh, this kid's shifty. This kid's shifty, too. Unbelievable. About, I would say, about a 35 yard run by Jacob Mapoyo, who looks spry. He looks shifty. My goodness. Raiders just. Seems like they're ready for this game to end. There's two minutes and 11 seconds left in the game. Broncos 35, Raiders 16. First and 10 from the Raiders 35-yard line. Number 10, Claire, Caleb Snyder getting a chance behind center after a great, great game by Reed Vakinot. Pass it to the right. His first pass is incomplete. Cam's decided to pass it a little bit, maybe getting some revenge from some of those games in the past. Got to say, if I was in the Cam's position, I might want to try and toss some more balls up. But they're also giving Schneider a chance to see what it's like and get some passes in here. And I would say they're probably going to hand the ball off to Mapoyo again. Need to give him a little rest. 
That's exactly what they do here. He shifts out, finds a, finds a hole on the right-hand side, and he goes down for another about 20-yard game. Mapoyu, 50 quick yards here in the final five minutes of the game. And boy, does he look shifty. Raiders, hate to say it, get a little bit embarrassed right now. You know, it's, it, they're playing for pride. And, uh, and you know what, when you're getting, you know they're going to run the ball and you can't stop it, you, you, know, you got to look at yourself in the mirror a little bit. They have a good enough defense that they should be able to stop this stuff, but they're not. Contain's been an issue, both those last two big runs. You know, guys getting outside. Raiders from shotgun. Or Broncos from shotgun. A deep, deep toss to Mapoyu again. All and he fights. He fights on first to ten. He fights for about seven yards. Great pitch and catch. Mapoyu looks fast as lightning out there. Fresh legs. And that's about a five to six yard gain. It looked like a little bit more from up here. And yeah, you have to, you have to, at the end of the day, as much as sour grapes can be, you got to give it up to, you know, head coach, head coach uh, Braden uh, Vakinot for getting the win here for Kamloops Broncos. This is a, it's a historic day in the BCFC. The first ever victory by the Kamloops Broncos over the VI Raiders. And, you know, some of those years in the past, you would have never thought this was going to happen. And, and now they've turned this program around and, uh, and they're, they're they're doing some really good things. And if you consider how close this, the, their game was against Okanagan and what Okanagan's doing to Victoria right now, this, uh, this Kamloops Broncos team has the ability and uh, potential to do some good things in the league this year, which is, which is extremely exciting for them. They got a great running game. Their offensive line's been phenomenal all game long. Unbelievable. That'd be ugly. And Clark Schneider. Hands the ball off to Mapoyu again. Mapoyu fights. This time they get stopped right on third down. So it will be a turnover. I suspect with 46 seconds left in the game, 35 to 16 game, that the Raiders are just going to need this one out. I would suspect. A different, a different, uh, definitely a different feel, feeling. At NDSS field here. Raiders will go to one and three on the season. I think Camels will move to two and two and slide into fourth place, I believe, depending on the fourth and third place, depending on how Chilliwack did. And after today, it's looking like Okanagan will take over as number one in the league with West Shore being at two. And the Raiders and Langley Rams both sitting on the outside of the playoffs, which is something you'd never thought you'd see even just a couple of years ago. We're still young. It's still young in the season. This Raiders team's very young and has their offense is showing flashes. This team just beat the same Kamloops Broncos team uh, a couple weeks ago, and they have just some learning to do on different sides of the ball. They were plagued with a lot of sicknesses this week. At one point, almost 21 players were out. And that is always not a real recipe for success uh, in a, when you're trying to prep for a team, especially a tough team that you, you know, fought tough two weeks prior. Now everybody has injury bugs and everybody has sicknesses, but sometimes things just hit you more. And I think that's maybe what hit the Raiders this week. And with all that adversary, adversary and uh, it made this game that much tougher. But they're a young team. They're an exciting team. Uh, I'd be remiss to not to mention Dylan Pye, who had one hell of a game today, catching the ball left, right, and center. And obviously Ben Chamalak, who had a rough first half, I would say, and uh, made some mistakes. But in the second half, particularly the third quarter, where he went off for about 250 yards, I mean, this kid has shown that he has the tools to be a successful starting quarterback in this league. He just has to grow and, uh, and work with this offense, and I think they're going to get better and better and better as the season goes on. But this is still junior football, and you have, to, you have to show up, and you can't make those mistakes. They're passing it deep. They're not taking a knee. They're going out in their laurels right now. 
Big pass by Chamalak to number 15, Riker Pearson, who's also had a pretty good game. The Raiders receivers and have, have done pretty well. It was a bit more of a quiet game by uh, Marin and Aaron Gordon. Um, but, um, you know, when you have Dylan Pye going off for probably, I would assume, over 150 yards today in receiving, and Chamalak probably passed the 300-yard mark, that's pretty good. The turnovers were the differentiating factor on offense for the for the Raiders. Uh, late hit. Late hit. Late hit. Another flag. That was uh, that looked like a legit penalty there. It was late. Let's see. People in the uh, beer gardens get a little feisty over there. Four seconds left in the game. This will be the last play. I suspect because they've been throwing up, they're going to huck it deep. See if the Ra Raiders can sal salvage something out of this game. Shamlock still behind center. And they're looking. Yes, they are looking deep. And he's throwing deep, but it was a bad throw. And that'll end the game. Bad throw over to the left by to Aaron Gordon. That's a wrap here at NDS Field. The final score, Kamloops Broncos 35, VI Raiders 16. And a big congratulations to Kamloops Broncos for their first victory over the VI Raiders in history. And uh, they'll move to 2-2, two and two, I believe, and the VI Raiders will move to 1-3 uh, and three on the season. So thank you very much for tuning in to BCFC TV and Raiders TV with with myself and hope that uh, you have a wonderful rest of your evening. Thanks very much. Bye-bye.